Well hello folks and friends and KDE fans. In this video we're going to be taking a look at KDE Plasma 6.4. Technically as of this video it's at 6.4.2. The main version was released last month in June so I'm a little late getting to it. But KDE Plasma 6.4 was a big release and there's a lot of features in there. So what I'm going to do in this video is take a look at all of my favorite features listed 1 to 10. The list is kind of ranked, but I'm not going to say that one feature is better than the other. It suits my need perhaps, but everything in this release was good, so let's dive in. Cool feature number one, and that's cool with a K, because KDE did originally stand for Cool Desktop Environment, and in my mind it still does. The system monitor got some improvements, it's got a new overview, and it's really good. It gives you a really nice snapshot of basically everything you need to know about your system as far as how it's running and stuff. You've got CPU, GPU, which is a really nice addition, memory, used in total, swap, used in total, and on the bottom is the applications list, and they added a background services thing. In fact, if you go to applications, it's listed there, background services, that's a new addition and it tells you kind of what KDE is using from your system. You can see the old overview was a bit more verbose. I think it feels like the network and system row is just very loud. There's a lot going on and there's a number of things that are actually truncated. And I just noticed that the, there's no GPU thing. In the new overview screen, there's a new GPU graph and in the old one, there's not one there. So yeah, that's pretty neat. I've talked about in the past how I miss K SysGuard. That was a really cool system monitor just like this, but it was just different. There are actually a number of features that K6Guard had that this system monitor doesn't. But honestly, the history view and the new overview is so good that, I mean, I don't, I can't think of any graphs I need to make. This covers pretty much all the bases. And number two on the list is some screenshot improvements. Now the KDE screenshotter tool is called Spectacle, and from what I understand, it's actually built into KWIN, so unfortunately it is not portable. And what that means is you can only use it on KDE, but let me tell you, this tool is awesome. They changed it so that the print screen button now just opens it up in screenshotting mode, because before it would open up as, as an application that you would have to then tell to take a screenshot. Now it just drops straight into screenshotting. And I guess they made some improvements to the video capture, the recording thing, but it seems broken to me. Sometimes it adds the green lines in the middle of the screen, other times it doesn't. When it works, it's cool. When it doesn't, it, uh, I mean, it's still cool. I don't really know what causes the green glitching. Maybe it's a codec issue, who knows? But overall, Spectacle is an awesome tool. I might actually say it's a killer tool. When I go to other desktops, I miss it. There is just nothing quite like it. It's a very, very cool tool. And another really cool tool that I use all the time is K-Info Center. They made some improvements to this too. I'm running Arch Linux KDE Plasma 6.4.2, so I got the latest hotfix, the joys of being on Arch. I'm using KWIN with Wayland on kernel version 6.12.35. I pretty much always use the LTS version. K Info Center is a beast. Look at the new energy settings section. I guess it's not really settings because you can't set anything here, but you can see the energy consumption and the charge percentage. And a new addition to K Info Center is the sensors section. It shows you the power usage, the temperature, it looks like it could show fan speed, PWM is pulse width modulation, so there's a lot of information here. And there's a handy button to copy it to the clipboard, so if you need to paste it somewhere you can. This is again a really cool tool that I use pretty much all the time. If I just need to look at my system settings, you just type in KNVO Center and pow, there they are. And number four in the list is drawing tablet improvements. So I'm not a big user of drawing tablets. I have this little Wacom tablet that is okay. I'm not much of an artist, but I can draw little cute faces. And I actually already used the new pin pressure thing without realizing that this was something that they changed. I guess they revamped this, this page to make it a bit more intuitive. They made it easy to change the left-handed mode, change it from pin to mouse mode, set the pin buttons. And the pin pressure adjuster is neat. I didn't realize I needed to actually adjust that because otherwise I have to push really, really hard or really, really light. I don't, I don't know what the issue is, but maybe that's normal, who knows. I'm not a big consumer of this feature, but I really like it because I like seeing more people use Linux. And if lack of drawing tablet support was your issue, it is not an issue on KDE. And next up in number five is color management along with some Wayland changes. Now the Wayland changes don't really affect me or probably even you. It's just more support for new, new plugins or protocols or however Wayland works. But 
Any development on Wayland is good, so we like that. But the team also made some changes to the display configuration section, namely to EDR or extended dynamic range. So I'm not really the consumer of this, but I do play a lot of games and do a lot of other things that deal with the display. So any work in the display to make it better and, and run smoother and look cleaner, I am all for. Now I don't really mess with the display section, but there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't remember seeing. EDR is one of them. There's also color accuracy, limit the color resolution, sRGB color intensity. And they did make some changes to the color profile. Now there's a new video color format called P010. I think it's for power saving, but like I said, this isn't my wheelhouse. I just think it's really cool this stuff is going on. Now for number six, they made a kind of whimsical change to K-Runner. I don't really get this one. I think it's neat though. K-Runner is a really cool feature built into KDE that you may not even realize. If you just go to the desktop and type, a little prompt will appear at the top of the screen and that's K-Runner. It's basically the same as if you hit the Windows key and start typing. It'll search your computer, it'll find apps, it'll even find apps that you could install. So if it's not installed, then you can just install it. But the main thing that they added was color. Now you can type in the name, like the name of X11 colors, like Cadet Blue, Old Lace, and their hex codes appear. So if you just have the name of an X11 color and you just want the hex code, I guess you can do alt space and then type in cadet blue and get it that way. <laughs> and while we're talking about widgets on the desktop, they made some updates to the notification widget, which now doesn't display notifications, or I guess it probably goes into do not disturb mode when you're running a full screen application, such as a game. I don't know if you've ever been playing a game and you get a notification that pops up in the middle of it. I don't, I feel like I have, I'm sure I have, but I don't really remember. But I do notice that the do not disturb thing turns on whenever I'm recording with OBS or doing something crazy like that. So that's actually really neat. And right next to notifications on number seven is media player changes. They made it so you can adjust the speed on playing media. <laughs> I don't know, I put this at number eight because it's kind of cool and I like development work happening on all sorts of things. This one is so whimsical, like why do you need to do this? It's cool, don't get me wrong, but is the media player widget the tool that should be adjusting the speed of playback? I don't know, it feels like it's outside of its concern. And another widget change, number nine, you get new badges and file system errors. So this is just kind of general enhancement to the overall feel of KDE through widgets. KDE is actually a really interesting desktop. It's written in Qt, which is a framework in C++ and QML, some other stuff. But the desktop is put together with these widgets. They're just little components or honestly little applications that all work in tandem to create this desktop. It's very novel in a world of desktop environments where everything is so tightly coupled and it's just like one application doing it all. KDE is basically the opposite of that. Number 10 is the UI visual design and accessibility features or fixes or improvements, what have you. There's a new settings section called animations and it lets you change stuff, which is really, really neat. Before you had to go into, I can't remember where you had to go, but it was kind of deep. I think it was two or three screens deep. Now there's just a panel for it. You just go to settings and change your animations. And they also made some improvement to the dark theme. Now I use the vanilla theme or twilight theme or whatever you want to call it. It's basically white and black. I find dark themes are just too dark and light themes are just too light. So I go in between. The dark theme is very dark. It's not for me, and I put the UI visual design stuff at the bottom of the list because, man, I really think KDE Plasma could use a visual refresh. But KDE Plasma has looked this way since Breeze, and that was... How long ago did the Breeze thing come out? It was quite some time ago. In its defense, I do think it's aged pretty well, but I personally have kind of grown out of the... I'm not really sure what it is, and I don't want to critique it too much because there are things I do really like about it, like Windows. They're not sharp edges and they're not super rounded the way that GNOME are. It's like an in-between that's quite nice. But the takeaway here is that I like that improvements are being made. You know, this isn't just one person working on it, it's a whole community of people. And if people say, hey, this could be improved, then somebody can go in there and submit a request and get it improved. So, and just like that, we have a new animation section and a darker theme, and I'm sure that there's other stuff down the road too, but 
that's the beauty of open source and a big community of developers and people interested and passionate about it. KDE is a really cool project and I've had gripes about this and that since the very beginning when I started making videos on the channel, but doggone it, I'm still using it. That's the thing about me. I like to critique things that I love because I like improvement. We can all strive for our best and that includes projects and people, all kinds of stuff. I remember using KDE during 3.5, back when it really was the cool desktop environment. And let me tell you, in 2025, seeing KDE pick up Steam and everybody's excited about it and seeing it in the wild with normies using it, that is a testament to just how good the desktop in the community is. So that wraps up my video list of features for KDE Plasma 6.4. I mentioned that I'm on 6.4.2. I don't want to talk about the hot fixes because I don't want these videos to go super long and hot fixes are usually just little things here and there. I just wanted to showcase the features here and put them in an order to make it interesting because I'm on Arch, which means I get the good stuff pretty early. If you're on Ubuntu or Fedora or any other distribution where you're waiting for it, now you can get a peek. I remember back in the day I used KDE Neon and I loved the idea. It was a KDE project that was a Linux distribution, but it was a bit too unstable for me, and weirdly, Arch with vanilla KDE is actually really stable. Arch is just really good. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with my desktop, I'm happy with my setup, and sometimes I waffle between GNOME and KDE. I'm like, I might go back to GNOME, but I'm still on KDE, and I have no, no plans in the near term to switch, so. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. You can join and become a channel member, which plugs you into the Discord. All kinds of cool stuff going on in Discord. But yeah, until the next time, I will see you when I see you. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.